Tim, when you, when you talk about Tibbs, you know, when, when you were here, it was a time when it had appeared that it was kind of turbulent. Culture re- really wasn't established. But with Tibbs, you kind of see a structure here, a foundation. They look like mm-hmm. they're going to be headed to the playoffs three out of the four years. You're you're at many of the games up close and personal. From your vantage point, what, what's been, you know, some of the keys here so over the years that you're watching this team in terms of how Tibbs is kind of running things? Well, I, I just think, like you said, the foundation of, of being a defensive-minded coach that goes a long way. Um, teams know when, when you do play the Knicks, it's going to be a dogfight, um, especially um, scoring the basketball and the schemes and, and traps that, that Coach loved to, uh, you know, put on certain scores um, throughout the season. But that foundation is there, right? So you look at all of the guys that, you know, they made moves for, those guys are defensive guys that can actually score the basketball. You know, so, again, um, we're, we're in the era now where it's a lot of points scored per night, um, a lot of scoring. So a lot of um, organizations have been going out getting the scores. But coaches um you know, fine with, you know, sticking to his his strengths, which is on a defensive end and, and you know, obviously having guys that can obviously score the ball as well. So um, I, I love the balance. I, I definitely love the balance and I love the foundation of, you know, um, the direction and, and, and where we're going. What's been your impression of OG Ananobi uh, being a New York Nick? Hopefully coming back soon. They need him back soon as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean he just does so much, man. I mean he he play multiple positions. I mean it's it's kind of rare to find a guy, especially in this in this day and age, that can play you know so many uh, positions and do it well. You know, so um, he's going to guard the best player. You know, he's going to you know um, knock down the shots from that corner. You know, he, and he's just a glue guy, man. And and every team needs you know a few of those guys and. That's what we have. You know, we have that in Josh. We have that in OG, you know, and um, I think I think he's really going to help us in, in the future. Once again, we're yeah, talking. Like- yeah, go ahead, Al. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to agree. Just saying I like what OG's brought to the team. Yeah. Now, I was just going yeah, to yeah. hit the reset. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy, CP the Franchise, Alex Charles, former Nick, Tim Thomas in the building, and also the head coach of Paramus Catholic. Shout out to Tim Thomas, man. Also the head of the Tim Thomas Academy. So Tim doing great mm-hmm. work uh, around the community, man. Um, on the on the Randall front, Tim, uh, Tim, a lot of speculation. When is he going to come back? How is he going to play? Uh, Carmelo mm-hmm. on his podcast said, you know, it's going to be a big adjustment having to, you know, use that that non-shooting shoulder and get used to the physicality. Have Did, did you ever suffer a, um, a shoulder injury like that over your career? Or, you know, what are your thoughts no. on, on, on recovery and comeback? I mean, that's a tough call because it is a shoulder, right? It's it's uh, Most people would think, you know, it, it would heal proper and, You'd be able to, you know, um, maneuver and, and do the things that you, you know, once was capable of doing before the injury. But I think it's, I think it's um, a situation where it is going to be tough, you know, for him to kind of, you know, get a feel for um, just just the game and and what he can do with the shoulder. If it's, you know, still pain, if it's stiff, if it's, you know, if he's limited and, you know, mobility. You know, all of those things play play a huge, huge factor because you got to remember in basketball, you're always stretching your limbs, right? So if you're shooting, you're raising your arms. You know, if you're playing defense, you know, you got your arms out. If you're trying to deflect the pass, you got your arms. If you're passing the ball, you're using your shoulders. So, um, so many different things that's going to come into play. But again, um, you know, these guys now, they're, they're playing with, um, you know, um, with, us older guys, we like to call it a trick of the trade with the new medicine and, and new technology and all those things. So, you know, hopefully, um, you know, he's he's once he comes back, he's comfortable enough to be able to get on the floor and uh, do the things that he's comfortable with doing or else, you know, it's just going to be um, one of those things where, you know, he's kind of forcing it. Um, and then obviously if, if we take a loss, then, the blame game and all that stuff going to come in. So I just, you know, next time I get a chance to talk to him, that's one of the things I'm going to probably bring up. Just make sure that you're comfortable with playing, knowing that 
you know, you're limited in, in so many different um, elements of your game. So, but I, I played, uh, I played with a broken hand. Mm. So I don't know if you guys remember the, the Stephon Marbury clip when he, uh, he did the spinning pass. Spinning pass. Yeah, yeah. 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 So if you, if you go look at that clip, uh, that spinning pass, he hit me. And I think I caught it with like one hand and part of my body, like a football player. It just flipped <laughs> flipped it up on the on the backboard with the opposite hand. So yeah, you gotta kinda check that out. But um yeah, I play with a broken hand, but nothing nothing with the shoulder. Obviously, you know, you have you know, your uh jam fingers, dislocated fingers, sprained ankles, stuff like that, but nothing never with the shoulder. And then playing with the opposite, uh you, the opposite shoulder, I mean that's uh that's something else, mm. you know. Now hopefully Randall does come back and he's able to play comfortably as you're talking about, Tim, but Mm-hmm. let's talk about when this team, you know, with all the injury reports, it seems like everyone should be coming back at some point. Maybe even Mitchell Robinson were lucky enough to get him for the playoffs. If this team is fully healthy, where do you think they stack in the East? Oh man. I mean, fully, I mean, listen, we, I think overall, again, I think the pieces that we brung in are great pieces, great additions for the playoff run. Right, because you're gonna have guys getting double. You gotta have guys to be able to make shots. Um, you know, it's gonna be a roller coaster. So, um, I, I I definitely you know love our chances against you know what the East presents. You know, especially with Boston, you know, Philly, um, and Milwaukee. You know, so um, I I love our chances, man. We got we got two guys that can score the basketball very well. Um, great group of you know role players. So, and the the one thing that's I think going to keep us in a lot of situations is the fact that our foundation is defense first. Mm. You know, so um, yes, the game has changed. It's more about scoring, but you know, in the playoffs, I always tell people that ask me, um, you know, how is it? Why is it always such a grind? Because I'm like, once the scouting report goes out the window, it's 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 over with. You know, so. You know, um, the scouting report is going to be there once guys understand, you know, each other tendencies and, you know, game plans and stuff like that. Now it comes down to, you know, who can actually get it done. So, you know, um, again, the the guys that we brung in, great group of guys, anyone could give us, you know, that boost, that energy, um, the scoring um, that we're going to need in tough situations. And, um, you know, I, I love it, man. Let's just get it on and, and let the chips fall where they may, right? I know everybody's itching right now. Like we ready, these, ready to get to April, yeah. man. Ready oh, yeah. to get to April, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like these last, you know, whatever, 12 games. It's like, let's get it over with, man. Yeah. Let's get to the playoffs, definitely. Is that is that how you saw it as a player? Like when you were on teams that, that were looking yeah. forward to the playoffs, was it easy to kind of overlook these last couple of weeks of the season and kind of look ahead to see, like, who are we going to play, how are we going to match up, I got to make sure I'm healthy for it? Is it Was it easy to kind of get, you know, overlook these last couple of weeks of the season? No, well, you know, I played in the 90s, so that's like the toughest era, you know, yeah. so. But but still, I mean, it's, it's – um, Right now, it's all about positioning yourself, right, for home court advantage, all those kind of things. Mm. Um, obviously, you know, um, you want your team to go into it fully healthy. So that's obviously not the case with us right now. But, um, no, as a player, man, you, you definitely know that it's around the corner. Um, I don't think no one tries to uh, slack off or anything, but you definitely start trying to prepare yourself to get, get ready for that. So, you know, it might be certain things that you know you might need to work on within the system of itself and, and, and kind of stay away from the, the regular season stuff where you're just out there trying different stuff. You know, you want to get more consistent, more um, realistic within, you know, the system and, and your strengths and your weaknesses. But, you know, outside of that, yeah, definitely around this time of the year, man, guys start, you know, getting that, that playoff, uh, you know, bug going. So it's it's, it's a good time. It just feels like a formality at this point. Like, I, I, like as a Knicks fan, especially dealing with all these injuries, I just want to get everybody healthy, do like the two kilo, <laughs> just sim to the end. Let's see yeah. the playoffs. I want to see what it all looks like. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm just over it at this point. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, the good thing about it for us, though, is that, you know, um, guys have been injured 
guys are going to be coming back. So these last few games are, are kind of help us gel a little bit, you know, get a rhythm, things of that nature, um, and then really start making that push. You know, um, teams like Boston is doing it right now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a few teams that's like really gearing up to let people know like what's what's coming. So um, I'm I'm just excited to, you know, like you said earlier, to be able to see, you know, our full team at full strength. You know, yeah. and, and kind of see what we have at, at that point. So, Tim, you you mentioned early that that you know you've given some advice to Dante Divincenzo. You mentioned that you you will talk to Julius Randle when you get a chance. Is, is that something that's been kind of official as part of the team, or just you just being the OG around the team? You feel like you know you you, you want to impart that wisdom as an OG and mentor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm always watching the game. You know, I grew up a Knicks fan, so um, you know, it, it was definitely a blessing to be able to play. For the organization twice so when when i am in a building um you know i'm watching the game having a good time but anytime i can you know share some information um i'm always willing to do that like the big fella robinson i told him about the free throws i'm like your hand's so big man just mm. you know get your left hand off the basketball just open your hands wide and shoot the ball with your right hand you know mm. and um he started doing it he started making his free throws started looking you know a lot better so yeah, I mean that's just an OG thing, man. You always yeah. want to pass on, you know, some wisdom to the to the young cats, especially when you're you're there and you kind of see what they're what they're struggling with. That's dope, and and you mentioned Mitch, and hopefully they get him back soon. But fortunately for the Knicks, their front court depth, especially in the big man rotation, they haven't really fell off because Hartenstein came in, he picked up mm-hmm. where Mitch left off. Hartenstein mm-hmm. went out for a little bit, then Precious Achua has been another revelation. What, what's been mm-hmm. your 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 um, thoughts on the on the Knicks center rotation since, since Mitch Robinson went out? I love it. I love it that we got a three headed monster now. Um, you know, I, I went to a game where. Uh, we was home against the Sixers and B was basically um, beating up on our bigs, you know, had our bigs in, in, in foul trouble because of the, all of the isos in the post and stuff like that. So, you know, having, having three guys, possibly four with OG, cause he's guarding a little bit of everybody. Um, that's going to help us, you know, it's definitely going to help us, you know? So I, I love, again, I love the additions and, 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 you know, what we, what we have um, brung in. Now it's just a matter of, you know, getting a chance to see the whole entire group out there and see what the rotation is going to look like and, you know, all of those things. Um, you know, coach is very old school. You know, he, he plays, you know, sometimes six, sometimes seven, you know, if you're lucky, yeah. eight, they, 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 eight they, a the, night. The people you know? in the chat said we need Tim on the bench. They say we need, we need depth, man. Are you ready? <laughs> Can you give them a couple of minutes? Man, I, I, last game I was at, I told Dolan, I said, I'll come back. So I was joking with him. I said, I'll take 50. I said, I'll take 50 cash right now. He said, oh, you cheap. He said, you at least, he said, you at least got to get the minimum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. So speaking about how Tibbs likes to go like six, seven man rotation deep, that's kind of the situation we're right now. What do you think about this experience for Dante and Hart playing so many minutes playing above what their roles are for this team. How do you think that will help them in the playoffs? Well, I mean, early on, uh, once Dante got here, obviously you want him to kind of fit in and, and, and you know, get adjusted. But you got to remember those guys been around each other for years in college. So, you know, the chemistry and the bond and that, that stuff was already there um, between that group. Um, but – you know, the, the the one thing that I that I, I do see with, with the guys is that they're always going to be fighters, you know, the Nova guys. They're always going to be fighters. They're always going to play hard and give it their all. Um, I just think uh, at some point, Coach might need to go at least eight deep or maybe nine deep, hmm. you know, to keep guys fresh. So, again, hey, we, we might see that hmm. in the playoffs because now we got a deeper bench. So we might see that in the in the playoffs a little bit. Um, obviously, now with guys being hurt, you got to play, you know, hard and, and those guys, you know, more minutes. So, you know, we'll see. Um, hopefully, he does that. You know, and, and we're not um, wearing these guys out, you know, too much for when the playoffs do come around. 